Good morning, and I'm here with Rick Lumadu from Texas A&M. Good morning, Rick. Good morning. Thank you so much for being with us here today. You bet. How's the conference going so far? It's great. So far, it's great. A lot of good energy, and I've given a presentation yesterday and looking forward to another one tomorrow, and just a lot of interest and a lot of great people here, a lot of neat things happening. Fantastic. So Texas A&M has been a, a great partner with Sloan C. and Merlot for this conference. Can you tell us a little bit about all the great support that you've provided to make this conference possible? Yeah, we've got uh, student ambassadors that are here helping to check people in at the registration desk, and then some of our IT staff from our university have come out and uh, help with the setup uh, pre-conference. I think Monday and Tuesday they were here pretty much the whole time all day, and they're serving now as you know, kind of on call if there's anything happening, if they need some some kind of fix or something somewhere. So, um, but they're wandering around and have the radios and things that are helping. So, um, it's going great. So Thank really you so much. It, it really takes a, a whole village to make yeah, a conference run. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of good, a lot of good things going on. It's a great exposure for for our campus and for our faculty and staff and students to be a part of. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's been great working with you the past few months. You are an Effective Practice Award winner, so congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about your Effective Practice? Yeah, ours we used, uh, we did our um, institutional ses assessment because we were up for SAC degree accreditation this year. And so when um, uh, my co colleague and I, uh, Dr. Rusty Waller, uh, we put together the institutional effectiveness assessment um, for our global e-learning program, our Master of Science in Global e-learning. And so we, um, we were going through all that. We had all our rubrics and all of our data points and everything. And um, you know, we measure our student learning outcomes based on their competencies and, competencies and being able to show that in a digital format. And we had a lot of digital archiving and things like that of student e-portfolios and evaluations that we've done with students, students done on each other and evaluations. So we were able to measure our student learning outcomes against those and mm -hmm. rubrics and things. And so um, it measured up well when I saw the Sloan C announcement for, you know, submitting a, uh, an effective online practice for an award. So I told my colleague, Dr. Waller, I said, what do you think? Do you think we ought to submit? He goes, yeah, let's go for it. So sure enough did. And we're going through that whole process and looking at the five pillars and how closely aligned we were, not really knowing when we did it that we were set up. So that was kind of affirming that we were really aligning with where, where you guys have found standards to be for those five pillars. So that was great. And um, so it was great to find out the, that we had won that award. So it was really rewarding. People consider that a very prestigious award. Um, and there were a lot of really great submissions. Mm -hmm. um, and five of them were chosen, and you were one of the five for, for the awards. And it's really amazing as you walk around and you hear people talking, um, they're doing a lot of great stuff, and I yeah. think that's a, a nice way. It's a fairly easy process to fill out I mean, yeah. once you, I yeah. mean, because you know your practice and you right. have all the evidence, and and it's just sharing it, and then it becomes something that's that's available for anybody right. to see and use. And I think it's a great way to share that that community piece. Right. Yeah. And just and just sharing, sharing best practice, and then people can replicate the model. That was you know one of the great things about the five pillars is is it replicable, and you know, and ours definitely is, and you can use it for basically whatever program or discipline you're in and, and basically mirror and, you know, fine-tune things and tweak it to your discipline. But um, the, it's a, it's a, basically a universal design and could, could be used in that way as a model to, to do their uh, institutional assessment, effectiveness model for their program outcomes and measuring. So. so people can learn more about that online and the effective practices. Yes. And Rusty will actually be talking tomorrow at the effective practice session in the morning. Yes. Yes. To share more about it so that people yep. can learn more. That's right. Um, and it really is a great practice. Yes. Thanks. Thank so you. how did you get into e-learning? Um, well, when I joined the faculty at Texas A&M Commerce uh, back in 2007, um, Dr. Waller was the coordinator for the training and development at that time. And he said, um, Rick, we need to look at possibly putting our courses online now because there's so much that's emerging and more students are demanding it because of time frames and you know scheduling and, and things like that. So I said, okay. <laughs> um, so that was one of my first uh, tasks was to basically put our courses in a digital format so that they could be put in an online delivery method and system. And so um, that's basically how I got involved with it, just because of the demand for higher education and, and especially our discipline um, to be in an online format. So how did you, you're a founder of a global online open access journal. Yes. How, how did that come about? So um, like I said, when I joined 
the faculty the, the program was called Training and Development. We also, about two years later, um, in about 2009 or so, we started talking with um, groups of people that we networked through conferences like Sloan C and coming here and meeting people and then meeting people in other you know, areas with their consortiums. And we, we formed a, a task force, basically an advisory council. And we, through that year process of meeting with educators and people in like groups like Sloan C, um, getting feedback and information, um, we uh, decided to, tr to change the name of our program from training and development because that was kind of going away um, for a more of a online global e-learning and so that's where the name global e-learning came from for our um, master's program so it's the it was the training development program now it's called global e-learning because there's so many people that are doing training corporate we have students coming from corporations from obviously higher education and schools um, but then also government agencies. We have well, one student who actually works as a um, HR trainer for a um, nuclear power plant in Mississippi. So mm -hmm. um, it's interesting to see the students that now are coming into our program, whereas before they were BCIS in Texas, and that kind of went away um, with the legislature taking out the BCIS requirement for learning like Microsoft products and things like that, like Word and PowerPoint and Excel. So those students went away, but we got this new group of student um, population coming in that were demanding and needing um, online delivery methods and how to teach online, how to teach to, to different generations, how to teach to different uh, learning styles, and what about global, the globalization and the whole infrastructure on that and how to t help them to work in intercultural settings because many of our students are coming from international and and we're working and networking with people even at this conference from, from overseas. So being able to work in a global in, in context. And so that's another one of our keys, keys in our student learning outcomes is global fluency, um, intercultural fluency, digital fluency. So all those things then, they come into our program and as part of our 12 uh, course program, 36 hours of global e-learning. So mm -hmm. it's really just kind of um, seeing where the trends are going and kind of getting out in front of it. and. And um, we've got, had very good success with our students, and they're very, very pleased with um, the, the program. Wow, that's fantastic. And it really is important to kind of keep up with changing times and, mm -hmm. and needs. And yeah, yeah, and we're using a lot of Web 2.0 technologies, a lot of the things from the vendors here that um, we've been able to implement and, and best practices and, mm -hmm. and how to put all those things into place so that we can give our students the best education possible to prepare them for the world they're going into, not the world we came out of. So it's, it's exciting. So how did you get involved with the Emerging Technology Conference? Okay, so um, I was, uh, I think probably the, the impetus for me learning about e the Emerging Technologies was through our membership and partnership with Merlot. And um, we met Merlot at another conference, and they started promoting this conference, I guess, when you guys started kind of doing a, It's our fourth year together with Yeah, that. kind of emerged. So um, I believe it was through through them. And so I've been to the two conferences in Vegas and then this this one here uh, this year. So what keeps you coming back year after year? Oh, it just, it's all the great excitement and energy and all the things that we're able to learn, um, colleagues and what pe best practices people are learning mm -hmm. and new, new things that are coming and emerging out there and just staying on top of things and being involved in what's going what's going on. The network the at this conference has yeah. been amazing. Such great people mm -hmm. and willing to share. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it's all relevant. It's all relevant, practical things that that I need to be the better instructor in my digital courses, my online classes, and working with students today. So, got a lot of great resources here. Well, thank you so much for you spending bet. some time in the conference with me and sharing with the, the online community. And again, thank you for all of your help. You bet. You're welcome. Thanks.